Hello everyone and welcome to Answer the Call. I had a different topic to start with today, but I sort of decided, um, someone in chat said, hey, you should try this, and I thought it was a pretty good idea, was to just, instead of have one topic, just have a podcast every now and again, especially in a time like this where, uh, let's be honest guys, the game feels pretty much, um dead <laughs> where uh there's not much of a purpose of playing i think we're already in the waiting for 311 game uh because 3.10 took so long and uh at the same time uh for me personally there's a few games on the horizon slash uh here now like new world that i've been enjoying a lot more than i have been star citizen and it's actually kind of hurting my star citizen star citizen experience is like playing games that are somewhat polished really makes star citizen look way worse than when you only play star citizen so um i thought this would be a cool thing to do is instead of have one topic whatever the caller wants to talk about at that time we can but cloud flare or Cloudfire, whatever it is the big server thing across the internet is having problems so discord is also having problems which is how we run our uh, podcast a lot of people also have been asking like how do i join the podcast and when do i come on um Sunday mornings, uh, Eastern time, we start around 10 o'clock. We have been starting around 9.30, 9.20 lately because we tend to have enough people in the in the calls ready to go by then, so we just kind of start. So that's Eastern U.S. time, so you can kind of figure it out on your own that way. But again, uh, we have a few, few people in the queue, so we're just trying to keep them in here and figure out what's going on, and hopefully we can keep them on long enough uh, to have a decent show today. Uh, I decided that we would put Unmatched last because Unmatched uh, tends to be first and he, he we, we usually have conversations for quite a while. So uh, give some other people some time in the beginning. But all right, we're going to start out with Gorgon the Destroyer today and hopefully Discord holds up for us. We'll have to see. Gorgon, welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Uh, Gorgon? I feel like he's just AFK. Let's try Alganth. Alganth, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the show. I'll just change the, um... The name that's up there, and we'll see what's going on with Gorgon. All right, Alganth, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, just a second. Is the audio scuffed uh, for you, too? No. You sound fine. Okay. Okay. Don't listen to chat. They don't know what they're talking about. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think the event replacing Sitcon is going to look like? That was actually like what our topic was supposed to be. So the original yeah. topic I chose was, will, can it save Star Citizen? And um, I guess for me, what, what would be saving it is like what would bring some hype back. And um, yeah. Uh, what do I think it'll look like? So I think that this has the chance to be the best Citizen Con they ever had in terms of those hype levels. And the reason I think that is because this will be the first time that they can polish everything they do. So it's not uh, the, uh, well, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, 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 this broke, that broke. Oh, like, you know, demo that is somewhat lackluster because it's not good uh, because it's being done live. Uh, this is the first time where they can show, um, I think the best example I can give is we did in 2016, I went to the LA office and we debuted Star Marine, me and DJ Knight, along with other, a bunch of other developers. Uh, we all played it and it looked pretty meh when we were playing it, but then they did like, they clipped it and made it like this video for themselves that advertised the game and they made it look a lot better and i think that's what citizen con can be it can be like what they display is a lot better than uh 
what they would normally display at a citizen con like ex- so you think- high polish basically so you think it's going to be closer to um, the vertical slice compared to usual sitcom demos? Yes. Okay. How I don't think this, it'll be a vertical think... slice necessarily, you know, but I think that style, yeah. I was thinking more uh, so uh, as to what they did with Invictus instead. No, I don't Maybe, think it'll be uh, something some... in-game, if that's what you're referring to. So you think they're going to upload uh, videos, the um, panels, for example, like last year, but not have anything uh, I think physical? they'll... D- okay, I think they'll do something similar to the vertical slice, but for whatever reveal, whatever, uh, what do they call it, their keynote would be. So that big thing they want to show. And then I think they'll do similar to like ISC features on things that they want to feature at citizen con so if it's planet tech if it's uh the update to um the quanta thing i think we would see stuff like that well that does answer my question then (laughs) that does yeah it does what do you think it would be Personally, I think they're going to do something like uh, Invictus, an in-game event with uh, some presentations, and also upload some videos on YouTube. Okay, so you, do you think it'll be like multiple videos that they'll just break up from the... Yeah, multiple mm-hmm. videos. I, I don't think they're going to do the uh, main panels like they did last year. No. For example, the uh, audio and the uh, environmental art. I think they might do something like that, but it won't be a panel, obviously. I think it'll be yes, like a more polished video. The the issue with those uh, presentations is that they don't really have an awesome backdrop like they did at Sitcon. It's basically uh, devs in their room, so... Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, we, we kind of saw that with uh, calling all devs uh, yesterday. It's, I mean, it's sure. something. Yeah, but it, it, it... I think that they could put b-roll over that stuff true but how much b-roll do they have for example audio or uh other stuff i don't know i mean they don't even have it for their squadron 42 video right so yeah that's kind of the point yeah uh it makes it it makes it pretty tough but i don't know i think that this has a chance to be something pretty good um but we'll see I don't know. The for me, the whole thing is is um, we're at the same point that we are every year. August, September is like some of the deadest time for Star Citizen. Like nobody cares. Nobody cares at this point. Um, every year, and it's just kind of quiet. They're they're less communicative at this point in the year, as well. Do you know why? Because they're preparing for Citizen Con. No. No, that's not why. That's because uh, E3 and Gamescom happen at this uh, time of the year. Okay, but they're People not really are... happening now. I mean, I guess Gamescom sort of happened now, but that was pretty... People Gamescom was kind of... Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, for me, like I said at the beginning, like, I was, I've was, i been playing a lot of New World, and I really enjoy it. And it's it's nice to play a game where, like, you know, everything that you pick up and touch has some value. You know, whether it's like low value or high value, it has a value where everything in Star Citizen is just kind of like, why am I doing this? Uh, (laughs) I don't know. I still think that the value discussion is uh, kind of misguided. Oh, okay. That's the topic for another time, I think. Um, We're here now. Okay. I, I think what you mean by value is progression. Right now, we don't have any sense of progression. Because progression gives you value. That's what you work for. Sure. I mean, but would you consider progression uh, the same thing as... I guess, for me, when I look at it, it's uh, what is what is the resource that I gathered or thing that I picked up? Let's start, let's start with resources. What is the resource like the... I don't know, the 
a Grecium or uh, anything. Any any item that you would mine in the game or any item that you would... commodity that you would trade in the game. What value do those have be besides a monetary value? And would you consider oh. that progression when I look at it more as like a crafting thing? I mean, you're crafting to progress gear. That's what you're doing. Sure. Or other outposts or whatever yeah okay yeah but is it misguided to want progression in the game now oh, oh no 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 that's not what i said uh what okay. i said is that taking this discussion from a value point of uh, view is kind of misguided it's more so a progression thing because at the end of the day those resources are used for progression yeah but we want that I guess it's just two different words that mean the same thing, though. The the value is in progression, for sure. And we want progression in the game. I mean, it's coming. They're still building it. Sure, sure. Um, but it's it's year eight, and there's never been a sniff at any sort of progression or value, really. Would you consider buying spaceships in the game progression? I, I do, so maybe there no. is more of a sniff. Personally, personal I don't. Why not? Because they're they're basically tools. They enable to you to do other things. M maybe progression. That is within, progression. Um, you progress from an I aurora would, to would... be able to mine, to be able to haul more cargo. I think that's progression. That is, tr that is true, but I would consider it uh, from a profession point of view. For example, progressing from a rock or a hand mining to a, a mole, for example. Mm -hmm. But for example, uh, buying a, an, an ethnicity, I don't consider that progression. Okay, maybe because they just have no purpose. Even if that purpose, they just enable you to do other things. It's basically horizontal. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> so far, the AMA is going okay, I guess. But yeah, what do you think about this idea? Because like, I assume you've watched Answer the Calls before. To I do this every I, now I, and again. I have been on Answer the Call before. Sure, I know. But I'm sure you've watched them as well. Just like in general, we go with one topic, pretty focused, where today is like a little bit different. Do you think this is a good idea to do? My answer is, have you seen any of the AMAs from Sitcon? They're bad. Yes. That's yeah. my answer. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, I, I, I just let him go. But yeah, we'll see. I think this is an interesting idea. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know if Gorgon's here, so we're going to find out right now. We're going to check on Gorgon again. Hey, Gorgon, are you there now? Gorgon is still not there. I don't know what's going on. All right, next we're going to bring in Double Jer. Jerry, are you there? This might be a fucking rap. Hello, can he you hear there. me? Yeah, I can hear you. How's it going? Does it sound trash? I'm not going to swear because obviously it's going on YouTube. It doesn't sound great, but you're on your cell phone. It's fine. Yeah, I'm on my I'm on my phone. I'm on my it phone. Is, so. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I have so to what do you want to talk about? Go back to my home PC. What do I want to talk about, Mike, Salty Mike, Michael, is so far 2020 has been, you know, been a bit weird. It's been a bit of a wild year for everyone. Sure. Um, so what has been your most enjoyable experience in the game so far this year? What's been the best experience for you? Hmm. Now Honestly. A thinker, isn't it? No, not really. I mean, I think pretty recently it's been the best where I, I played uh, with a big group with the rock mining. Anytime we've gotten together and done, like, group stuff. Um... All the org play. Yeah. Yeah, all the org stuff that we've been doing recently has been really, really nice. And just, it, it's kind of the stuff I've been doing outside of the game is building up a YouTube channel and building building my Twitch community 
more than anything related to the actual game. But if if you're referring to anything that we've done in the game, it's definitely that is grouping up together and and um, interacting with other players. Because I, I haven't. That's not an experience I've really had with Star Citizen. I, I haven't been blessed with the ability to do that very much because of the time of day that I stream on. Yeah, I think that's that's very been, much been the same for me. Like, um, as anyone will tell you, I'm quite a, I guess, an extroverted person. I like interacting with people. Mm -hmm. And so for me, over the past, like, eight, nearly nine months, the best scenarios have been where we've used VoIP when it worked to actually talk to people. VoIP has so been for the, example, yeah. when the yeah, when the prisons released and everyone had, like, one location that they all wanted to gather around, and we'd try and break out the caves, and there was someone creeping through the caves going, hey, yep. the prison warden doesn't want you here, and fucking jumping all over people. And then, like, there was the time when me and you stumbled upon uh, Mythmatic on stream, yeah. and we were just shouting at him over VoIPs, and yeah. you were like, this is a simulation, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, And then, like, the next day, all my friends were messaging me going, you realize that we all just heard you on his stream? And it's that kind <laughs> of interaction. Those, those community interactions that I never got the year before because I didn't really know about Twitch or anything until this year, but has definitely been the best for me. Sure, sure. I, I think, and the, problem, the worst thing about that is VoIP doesn't work very consistently in the game, or it just seems like a lot of people just don't use it, don't know how to. Um, I know the but the main VoIP button is a very like weird. It's in a weird place, you know. The they're too busy buying numpad plus. Now. I can't all afford microphones as well. Remember that. True, true, true. But the yeah, I mean, I think VoIP was probably some of the the more the more useful and more enjoyable experiences that I've had as well. That's true. I've had a lot of fun with. Yeah, I'm with surprised VoIP. you didn't go with. I'm surprised you didn't go with rock mining, considering that you're mostly a mining guy. Well, yeah, I mean. The, I think rock mining was one of the better changes or things that they did to the game because I think mining was just a little bit tedious, and I think the way they the way the rock works is is really good. But that's what I like right now. But it, if if you wanted to ask me the best experience, I think it was um, building our little org recently. That's been so fun because for people that don't know, is is I have an org, but we don't really invite members to it yet. We just kind of do it through Discord right now. Um, cause there's no functionality on the website really. And, um, we, it's called 30 K incorporated. So 30 K incoming is what it looks like. And then we, we made it, we kind of role play as like a company. So we go out and we do like mining operations and then all of the money is given to the org. We give 30% to the people who participated and then we buy ships for people in game so they can take better part in our operations and like we're building people up with that and it's been a lot of fun figuring out like how the numbers would work and 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 then at the end of the month we do profit sharing with all the profit from every member that's taken part in in the org um i believe that's how it works and we uh figuring out all those numbers and having those conversations was like so much fun and so interesting to work that stuff out so i yeah, I would say that's probably my 2020 highlight, for sure, is the org. But oh, not, not playing the uh, prisoner transport mission then, I guess. Uh, thanks, Mike. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pulling on you. I have, I have one more question, if you want, before I yeah. shoot off. Go for it. Uh, so, obviously, you're a, you're a big mining guy, and the org mostly um, focuses on mining at the moment, considering how fleshed out the gameplay loop is. Mm -hmm. With the state that that's in now, what in terms of career paths and progression are you most looking forward to next? Hypothetically, of course, that maybe will come. Like, I want to be a bounty hunter in Star Citizen, right? Sure. What is it, aside from mining, that you're most looking forward to next? I mean, if, if we want to go, like, super imagine... Uh... Stuff yeah, let's go full on imagine like what, what you would, because uh, for me it's either bounty hunting or finally putting the Drake Herald to good use, right? And mm -hmm. having data to do stuff with. I think it would be uh, land ownership. But if you wanted to go with careers, uh, yeah. which I think is let's what you mentioned. Focus on careers. In, in the short term, the cargo decks seem really interesting for cargo haul hauling. And I find that pretty cool, but 
I think salvage is the thing that everybody really wants to see how Star Citizen does. Um, whether it's salvaging a ship of a, of a live player that you just took out or uh, a random thing that you come across. I think salvage salvage is something that's that's so key to the game uh, that that would be the thing that I look most forward to. And I think that's why people give CIG such a hard time about it falling off the roadmap, asking the question, where is salvage all the time? is because I think people recognize the same thing is that uh, it, it ties into so many aspects of so many other professions. Uh, like, for example, you want to be a bounty hunter. Well, what do you do with the ship that of the player that you just bountied, you know? Um, if, you, if you take out that player and you just disable his ship and, and, you know, only extract the player from the ship, what do you do with the ship when it's sitting there? Uh, is that salvage for you, or is it something that you, like, return it to the authorities and they impound it? I don't know, but that's something that I find to be really, really important, uh, is salvage. What about you? Well, what, there we go. What about bounty hunting? I mean, like, when I, when I was growing up, my, my mum and dad always used to watch that flipping show dog the bounty hunter and i was always <laughs> like this is it i was like this is so cool and then obviously you grow up and you're like that was a pretty stupid show are the you gonna give doing it... that stuff in space are you gonna offer every one of your bounties a cigarette to calm them down i would be like listen here, listen here brother i've got this cigarette you can have this cigarette but you gotta come with me or it's gonna get rough and i am the dog in. the big bad dog but i think what would be really cool is like with player bounties are more what appeal to me, but obviously I'm really bad at ship PvP. Like, mm. I'm terrible. You put me against someone like Noodle or Virgil, I'd just get blown up instantly. So I, the the idea of using VoIP to be an FPS bounty hunter is where I want to go with the game. Like, that idea is so cool. Like, there isn't a bounty hunt in space sci-fi game that I can just play at a minute. So. Yeah. Like, hey, stop right there. Not an FPS one. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, like you sneak up on the guy and you're like, all right, Come in, come down this alley. I got you. Mm. Okay, cool, cool. Got him. Got him. Well, all right, Jerry. I guess we'll let you go if, unless there's anything else you want to add. No, it's all good, man. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Cool. Laters. Bye. All right, so we're going to try and talk to Gorgon in this, in this room, and we'll see if this works. Hey, can you hear me here? No. He, his account's just messy. That that works. Hello? Hello, testing? That works. We're, we're just going to do a direct call. That works. Can you hear me? I am in direct control. Yes. All right. We got Gorgon. So, Gorgon, what do you want to talk about today? I kind of asked Gorgon to come on because I have a question. <laughs> oh, you have a question for me? Sort of, yeah. Well, what did you want to talk about? Honestly, like, I just wanted to come on to the show to just kind of, like, support you and, like, just, like, you know, I typically like talking about Star Citizen stuff because, you know, as I said, like, yesterday, like, it's a big part of my life. Like, the project's been going on for a third of my entire lifetime, right? So wow. I'm kind of married to it at this point. Sure. So, but my question was actually going to be, what the fuck do we even talk about? <laughs> because we can't talk about Squadron 42 because we yeah. don't have an update. We can't talk about server meshing because that's making progress, but is nowhere to be seen. We can't uh, talk about fucking, like, what the fuck do we even talk about? <laughs> like, right? You know? Yeah, well, so, so, like, that's the, the question. Well, the thing I wanted to ask you, because I was curious, because you are a combat player, was recently the missile operator thing came off the roadmap. Oh, and gosh. yeah, but everyone's freaking out. It seems like like all the combat people like Moist didn't like it, I heard and and uh but I didn't speak to anybody directly yet about it. And what I read was yeah, the missile operator mode thing like we have these big grand changes we want to do to missiles uh that'll happen next year, but we we took this off the roadmap because we want to focus on the problems with missiles now. That's what I read. Yeah. Is that what you read? Well, 
this is kind of twofold, right? Because like we have to talk about the card itself and the missile operator mode. And then we have to talk about these very vaguely foreshadowed changes to missiles in early 2021, right? Sure. So when I first looked at missile operator mode, I did not get any good vibes off of that personally as a combat pilot. No, that's because, a weird thing like, to have. It requires multiple people, right? it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like as a combat pilot, I'm usually flying single seat dogfighter ships. Hold right? on. Are you are you uh like smacking your mic or touching it or anything? Uh no. Okay, it sounds Hello? that way. Testing? Yeah. Okay, sorry. But uh, maybe it, don't yeah, don't whack your desk or something because that's what it's not, something's coming through. But go ahead, I'm, I apologize. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, yeah, but like in a single seat fighter, who's my missile operator, right? Exactly. Me. <laughs> so, like, I just have a hard time conceptualizing of what missile operator mode could actually be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, because it's like, do I hit like alt? like let, let's say control tab and it's like the scanning mode is Perhaps. it like do i lose targeting and regular guns now when using missiles like what the hell does that even mean right uh, yeah who knows so, yeah so like that doesn't really get us anywhere as far as like improving the combat experience goes it just sounds like random gobbledygook right so and then, yeah it coming like, off the roadmap for me i was like oh whatever like as long as they're focusing on the true problems with missiles now, which is, like, the way they fly and some other things uh, that maybe you could touch a little bit more on, that's that's my main, main concern. Right. Which is why I made that big post that Yogi replied to as well, right? Yeah. Like, yeah and thanks for the shout-out on the other show, by the way. No problem. But, uh, yeah, but, like, that's the thing. It's, like... You know, as much as I love having Yogi come in and say, like, hey, we hear you, we agree with you, we're looking at it, we're going to change all this stuff. And I'm like, OK, that sounds cool. Yeah. But now they've made this change where they're like, oh, well, we're going to have to take missile operator mode off because we want to work on these additional changes. And that sounds like to me that they were just going to leave everything alone effectively and then just add in this separate mode. That would which solve, they thought would solve bad. everything. That, that 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 I don't think they realized like like they're just adding an additional layer as like a feature, quote unquote, to say that we have done something that doesn't actually fix any of the problems. And then now that they've received that feedback from people losing their minds everywhere, like on Twitch and Reddit and fucking Spectrum and everything. Now they're like, oh, OK, well, yeah. maybe we should actually go ahead and fix the previous issues they've been talking about for the past eight years instead <laughs> of just adding another random layer of fucking mitochondria on top of this fucking science experiment that is the project now. What, like, what are the actual <laughs> issues with missiles? All right. So first off, like why like the, the missiles just have so much fuel and so much maneuverability. Yeah. Right. So like any missile from size one or even size zero, if you count the rockets from the fucking Rattlers all the way up to size nine can make a 180 degree turn without losing any velocity, fly another 10 kilometers and hit the target. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Right. Like. Even in a racing ship, you are not going to be able to get around that like, you know, nine times out of ten, especially with desync. Right. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, like they're just so powerful. They're a guided weapon, you know, and like that's not even necessarily a problem in and of itself. But like it's just laid on so thick. Yeah. And the weapons are so nerfed and the projectiles are so slow that it's like you see a guy. And like, let's say he's your bounty and he's moving at like 600 to 1000 meters per second at a 45 degree angle. Where's your pip? Well, I hope you have an ultra super mega wide curved monitor because it's <laughs> way over in left field, right? <laughs> yeah. So what do you do at that point? You obviously can't shoot him. You're never going to make that like angle of attack and curve to actually land hits on the target, especially with something like cannons. So you just... Middle mouse, middle mouse, middle mouse, middle mouse, middle mouse, hold and pray. And then half the time you've turned around and are spooling to the next location and it goes kill and he's dead. And it just doesn't feel good. 
it's it has like barely any skill involved like you know and it just it just doesn't feel good to be receiving that kind of stuff and it doesn't feel good to be sending that kind of stuff yeah because when, when it happens to you you also know the 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 level of skill that was involved to killing you in that situation and it was non-existent exactly like i went yeah. on a tear last night at port olisar and murdered like eight people with guns and then as soon as the one guy comes out with a saber loaded full of rattlers and i see 16 like different yeah. icons popping up i'm <laughs> like well guess i'll just fucking die and go to jail for 16 hours yeah you know and the worst part the absolute worst part of it all it's not the balancing it's not the fact that size one missiles in larger quantities are more powerful than size nine torpedoes. It's not about the tracking. It's not about the fuel amount. It's not about the maneuverability. It's not about the lack of Mav like power on spaceships. It's the fact that they're free. Right. Is that you can cheap? dump. They are free. Well, yeah, they're not even cheap. You, you get them on claim. Yeah. You just get them on claim. Sure. Yeah. So now that we've brought in all this context around why missiles are bad, how is just adding a different mode to the operation of missiles going to fix any of those issues? It's yeah. not. Yeah. So, and we're not even going to start even touching that until early 2021 now. So we're basically but, boned. But how do you know that? Because like, I'll read it. I'll read it out loud. We've decided to move missile operator mode to release simultaneously with additional improvements to missiles. We have planned for early 2021 in order to make, a bigger and more comprehensive impact on the missile gameplay at once. This card has okay. been removed from the roadmap, expected to release alongside missile improvements in 2021. So when they say at once, that means immediately. What? What? Immy. Okay, we've decided to move. To me, at once means immediately. To me, at once means that they are changing things about missiles and adding missile operator mode at the same time. It doesn't reflect any sort of time frame, in my opinion. Like, oh, it's still going to be happening. Fuck, so I read this incorrectly? I believe so. Yeah, Pepe. as soon as I read it live on this, I, <laughs> I, I, read it this I read it correctly, and I paused and only read yeah. at once. We've decided to move missile yeah. operator mode to release simultaneously with additional improvements to missiles, we have planned for early 2021 in order to make a bigger and more comprehensive impact on the missile gameplay at once. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're trying to grasp for something positive to say about this, and I no, completely let me read it again. That, let me read but, it again. But, hold, but, on. No, no, hold, on, hold on. One second. No, no, no. Okay. All right, go for it. We've decided to move missile operator mode to release simultaneously with additional improvements to missiles we have planned for early 2021 in order to make a bigger and more comp comprehensive impact on the missile gameplay at once in order to do something now that's how i read it at once as in these two things that we are speaking about in this sentence are going to happen together at this time frame that we have just specified being early 2021 okay which will be delayed because it is cig yeah that's the I, way i see it <laughs> i'll tell you guys, I'll, I'll tell you guys now my co reading comprehension level is very low my IQ is very low. So for me, that's how I read it. But I can see why everybody is saying that I'm wrong in this. Because I, I, I'm. we do this stream live. It's it's on Twitch. So people in Twitch chat are just being like, you are wrong. So I'm assuming that I am, uh, given that everyone is telling me that I am. That's really bad if that's true. Yeah. Because... That impacts literally everybody in the game all the time. Not just combat people, but people that are out there doing whatever. Uh, it certainly impacts anybody who streams or, I guess, mainly streams Star Citizen. That's a massive impact if they don't make changes to missiles at once. <laughs> you need to yeah. make changes to missiles at once. That's my opinion, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess the only other thing that I wanted to say about missiles is uh, another content creator on Twitch. And I won't name that person just because that's just going to create a finger pointing scenario that we don't want to get at. But okay. they alluded to the idea that something will actually be happening sooner than early 2021 concerning missile gameplay. Now, that has me believe 
that they are actually going to be working on something to fix the way that countermeasures work, because that is something that Yogi actually brought up in the reply to my thread was that the first thing that we're going to want to do is get countermeasures working just so that you guys have a slightly better experience with missiles while we're pending this rework and this new mode. Right. Sure. Now that all sounds absolutely fucking fantastic on paper. Like we would love for chaff to be something other than just a random expendable poof, like, you know, confetti grenade. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that shit hasn't worked in fucking years, even though flares are seemingly working like half. Okay. Sometimes like mm-hmm. varying server to server, but I don't understand why, but I'm not confident that's actually going to change anything at this point because server and networking issues are not getting touched in the next millennia, according to the latest calling all devs, right? So even if the countermeasure feature is perfectly coded, perfectly implemented, it's absolutely stellar, it works absolutely every single fucking time without fail in a controlled environment, as soon as you put it on the live patch and put it on to the crazy net code that we have now, it's still going to be chaffing and flaring in the wrong places because we're in spaceships moving a thousand meters per second and yeah. the actor to client net- network refactor hasn't happened yet, which means the server has absolutely no fucking idea where anybody is at given any given time, sure. which is why 600 eyes are space superiority fighters and can be looking in the completely other direction from you and still shoot you in the face. <laughs> so I don't know how combat is going to be salvaged in any degree until we see some sort of, like major performance improvement as far as sync is concerned because people always talk about like oh jousting is bad and there's no positional combat and the balancing is all wrong and you know i do like sympathize with that because when you play it you feel that right yeah but how can you know if if it's that or if it's the net code Big fucking exactly. Like until we get better network performance, I don't think we can really judge any of the mechanics of the fucking video game properly because none of them are actually working right because there's so much delay between actor, client, and then server, and yeah. then coming back that it just looks like a complete janky motherfucking clusterfuck. That's why you can see the inside of your neck when you're running in Star Marine. That's why some people will shoot you once and you die instantly. Mm -hmm. That's why some people are like, wow, I got torpedoed when you were actually hovering above their cockpit, putting fucking Panther fire on them for literally five minutes straight. And that's the thing. And apparently the only time we're ever going to see improvements to servers is the network, uh, the server to actor client refactor which what the fuck is that in the first place? When's it coming? And is it going to get pushed back like literally tomorrow and then server meshing, which yeah, we're reworking time yeah. <laughs> itself. So who fucking knows? Yeah. Hard, hard to disagree with that. Mm-hmm. Hard to disagree with that. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, yep. Cock. And our next caller, Henrik, are you there? Oh, Henrik, I can barely hear you. And I have you turned up to 200% already. What about now? I hear you just fine now, Henrik. So what do you want to talk about? Um, I... I have a, a question about uh, to you. How do you think um, uh, coding works? I mean, how do you think you are? I mean, we are working with coding. Coding. How do um, how do you think um, uh, game design actually works, and how the program is uh, is working to force the end goal? Oh, I don't, I don't know anything about game design. Like, do I think the the current game design is good? I don't, I don't think they're even there yet. Yeah. You're not um, uh, wrong there, but um, uh, how do you think um, uh, we, a lot of people are working with the different iteration and so what in relation to what you are working with, for example? Oh, so do I think that, like, they're working with a different game than we are? Mm, sort of, but um, uh, more like, um, uh, how do s- when they are explaining how they are um, uh, in different branches and... 
I man. think they don't have any clue what they're doing. And I, and I don't... That's not to put the actual developers down, necessarily, but it may be to put people like Chris, Todd, and some of the higher up guys down slightly. Because I don't think that there's any documentation about what Star Citizen is. I don't think that when somebody has to design something like Salvage, that they have any idea what is in Chris Roberts' head. And I think that's the problem with the design of the game currently, is I don't think that there's some big fucking document that says, this is what the game is, guys. These are the constraints at which you are to work within. And this is what this is. Like, the last design documents that we saw were obviously, like, mining and these other things. And that is the the issue that I have, which I think sort of answers your question, is I, I think the game design is kind, kind of made by the seat of their pants currently because they don't have a a true understanding of what Star Citizen looks like at the end. Yeah. Because I think that that's is, only in Chris's head. Yeah, Would, that is quite a good um, answer of the question because you... The, right there, you're talking of um, uh, what's called the wa waterfall model. Yeah. And, um, uh, in um, uh, coding gen generally, that is the last thing you want to work with. Um, uh, when you're coding anything, because yeah. it has to be so um, uh, malleable, your work time. Why do you think everything has to go past Chris? Um, I don't think everything has has to go. Past no, but Chris. It, but it does. I, no, I'm just saying it does. I don't. I'm not saying it has to to make the game good, but it's what happens right. because the only person that knows what Star Citizen is is Chris. Yeah. Does that make sense? That may sort of sense, but I think it's um, uh, the only... I don't think um, uh, all things um, uh, goes around Chris. I think um, uh, it's probably o only, in quotes, the, um, uh, the yeah, visuals, how the models look and how um, uh, the different... You you don't think it's how like the game plays or not? I think like the because they the here I'll give a really good example of this problem, right? Is when before Yogi and these guys were around, there was a question about the flight model to Todd Pappy, and he answered with this, um, and I'm pa definitely paraphrasing. The reason we don't have any fixes right now is because we're still having the conversation of. Uh, of how things should work. Uh, I believe it should be one way. This is Todd saying it. Tony, or not Tony, uh, I think he, he mentioned Chris believes it should be another way, and John Crew believes it should be another way. And, and I think that that's is... what's happening with Star Citizen at all times. And that's the problem, is that uh, there isn't a way. Yeah, and... That is what is happening, but that is what happens to all code okay. um, uh, environment, where you're getting, um, uh, yeah, all those that have anything to say about them is this. So the guy who wants, like, uh, there has to code this, the guy who is the um, uh, owner of it, as uh, Chris Roberts and Todd so Pappy and the other guys. Sure. And the, um, uh, yeah, anyone else that probably have to touch this um, uh, area of the code. So those guys and, will say, well, what you want isn't possible, or it will take this long, or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, where you're getting down, what do you want, and what um, uh, uh, what is possible, and what is not possible. But you are only, for example, only looking at the flight model, and putting everything um, else aside, Sort of, you're heavy in the background, but you are um, uh, still having. Um, uh, you're only focusing on the flight model. You're not thinking about the um, uh, the combat and the yeah, the racing part of it. Yeah.
think about them. How do we get this flight model to work with our servers, with our backend, with our um, uh, yeah inputs? Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, then when you're um, uh, well, when you are finished with that meeting and getting sort of quits permission or getting to a point where everyone is sort of in, or in agreement, and, uh, then you are the code coder more or less starts on the um, uh, on the coding of the um, uh, system. Yeah, I think the problem is, is is it seems to be hard to get in agreement on a lot of things. A lot of th it can be sometimes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Was well, there anything else you want to ask slash add? Uh, I'm not sure. Any question you question you have? No. Because I'm not. You're. You, I know you're going to school to be like a a game designer, right? And uh, no, I'm. I'm a more programmer. Pro I'm well, yeah, but you're in. You want to go into gaming, right? Yeah, I think so. Still, okay. but with the COVID right now, I don't think my opportunities is so great as again. Um, they may, they may or may not be. I don't know. You never know. You never know. Um, uh, I'm, uh, right now, I'm uh, in I'm, uh, the electrical um, uh, area. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because like yeah. I, that that's why I don't necessarily have another question. Is because that stuff is usually above above my head. I mean, we just saw how my reading comprehension is. So, you know, coding is going to be even lower than that. So... So my reading combination isn't that great as well. How do you how do you deal with uh, school and coding with dyslexia? Uh, <laughs> I yeah. can't even say it. Go ahead. With dyslexia. Yeah. Um, uh, it is actually quite easy when I'm coding. The problem is when I have to describe what I have made to the other guys. Yeah. Um, uh, they I prefer to do it in voice or um, uh, in a meeting. Gotcha. I mean, because when I'm half of the time, they have to rewrite it for me because uh, because of all the spending hours. Gotcha. They have been um, uh, better um, uh, in um, uh, time, but I don't think never. Uh, I think never will go away. And then I'm using a program called CD Word in English. Um, uh, it's CD. Uh, it's CD or in Danish. Okay. I mean, it is reading what I have read off for me and giving me a, a little um, a better um, uh, suggestions. Yes, okay. Of what I have, you know, what I want to write. Yeah, those are helpful. They are really helpful. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good, and I'm glad we talked about this, Henrik, because I know this is one thing that I will say, and I want to say it with you here: is every time you come on the show. Somebody makes some stupid ass comment below about your accent and how I shouldn't have people on like you on the show. And you come on every time with no fear, don't care, ready to talk about whatever. And I just want to say I, I appreciate that. So, you know, uh, I don't know if you read the YouTube comments and even know uh, and about no, that. I can't. Yeah. I'm, uh, have to, uh, I don't have the time for it. First Good. Of all. Yeah, keep it that way. <laughs> keep yeah. it that way. I'm happy every time I see you come in the show because we always have something nice to talk about. So I appreciate it, man. I'm glad to hear that. And yeah. it makes me want to come even more. Good. Good. And I hope you do. So, all right, Henrik, I'm going to let you go now, though. Yeah. Talk see to you, you soon. Bye. And the call I've been trying to avoid the entire show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we did put him towards the end because we tend to have some longer conversations, but we have two more people after him, so we will have to eventually cut off the call. But Unmatched. Welcome, Unmatched. Man, you're trying to save the best for last, right? Uh, you're not going to be last. <laughs> Still, I best for later, man. I'm the star of the show, man. Sh you're the oh. star of the show. I keep yep. trying to tell you that, the, the, that this is my show. Oh, oh. I didn't know, but all right. Um, and if you want to be the, the star, you got to get your own podcast. 
I mean, I have a star. I've made three Star Citizen videos. The most one that that was two years ago. It had it has two point three k views on Woo! it. Woo! With, with the with the, but that was three years ago. It's it's just that I never. What what was it about? That, yeah. What was it about? What was it about? Because two k two point three k views is actually really good. Like I'm not uh, sarcastically oh, wooing. It was it was um it was. Hercules versus Banu Merchantman, like uh, I was. Bro, it was a ship shit. video. Yeah. Oh <laughs> like, my god. Like a lot of people liked it though for two point three days and have <laughs> and, and and having twenty one <laughs> subscribers. That's pretty good, dude. That is really <laughs> like good. 21, 21, 100 people. Wa you know, watch my video and <laughs> Can you know this, the way I two ships that don't even exist in the game. That's the best part about it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but. Uh, Maybe one day I'll, I'll I'll make video. I really would like to make videos just like Star Citizen, man. Star About what? Citizen nowadays, I don't feel nowhere close nowadays that I do back that I did back then, man. <laughs> I think we all <laughs> anybody who was there two, three, four years ago doesn't feel the same way about the game that they did then. I think like the show that we had Soros on was really really interesting, right? Because Soros was yeah. the. I mean, if you if you had any relation to twitch and any relation to star citizen in the last six years you equated star citizen with wtf asaurus right like yeah I was, the two I was were there synonymous a long time ago with him yeah. yeah i was i was a lot i've been donating to him for years but um and yeah, yeah. but just the way he he looks at things now it, it's it's super telling about the the current Dude. state of the game right we're we're beaten down and that that that's basically what i'm getting into yeah right now with the topic that i want to speak about is sure. that um you know like all these games they're coming out right and like uh one after the other they keep on raising the bar every three years the bar is higher that's why uh development of video games gets more expensive because some game comes out and it raises the bar again you know what I'm saying? It, 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 and it constantly getting raised. And with Star Citizen taking so long to come out, anything, by the time it's even ready to come out, anything that they had that they could say, oh, our game has, oh, it's groundbreaking, mm -hmm. it's not It's not going to be groundbreaking anymore, you know? Yeah. It's it's really not. Like, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately afraid that th this game is just going to be like, that. Just gonna, it might come out, but when it comes out, no, everybody's going to look at it as like, oh, this other game has that. Oh, it's, it, you know, and it, everybody's just going to look at it as like, oh, the jack of all trades, master of none. You know what I'm saying? What what and, game is raising the bar for Star Citizen it, necessarily? Because I, I don't see I don't see that point, though, is I still I, see yeah, the scale, yeah. the planets, the the visuals of the game still uh exceeding a lot of other games but like playing new world recently like yeah it's in it's in lumberyard it looks really good but it's not star citizen yes it's not star citizen but little by little each game whether it be an all in one game or like like in in different games all around like let's yeah. say let, let's use i have a list here of all the games that are currently raising the bar but let, let's just use let's talk about a game that's not on the on the list like um like uh dark souls 3 it, it's the gold standard for action combat that raised the bar which everyone looks up to now that's okay. the, the 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 bar that's the bar for action combat you get what i'm saying sure and um that's just that's just one example of where every every melee game is trying to uh achieve with action combat as a dark souls 3 vibe you know what i'm saying okay right now we have um we have this new game that just came out from china uh black myth wukon just raised the bar for graphics we have dual universe they, they it was a game that star citizen shouted out themselves they're in beta i was literally playing it while i was waiting to come on the show mm -hmm. it seems legit it seems really nice you know what i'm saying you have all these persistent vehicles these persistent um you know areas you can edit and stuff like that that's another bar right there you have ashes of creation look what those guys did in three four years after the white papering that, that they're gonna have 250 v 250 all in one area that's another bar raised right have they there. proved that and, yet 
They have they, they have not proved that yet, but he's consistently okay. on it, and I could see Chris it Roberts happening. is consistently on a lot of things too. But but, but here's the thing: this uh, Ashes of Creation is 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 going to be released by the end of this year, at least the alpha will, and you'll be able to see whether or not all this. I, I doubt whether he's going to be lying so close to his his alpha coming online. I I doubted the answer especially, the call twenty sixteen was a lie on match and and, and 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 even if they and even if he did we didn't spend our money pr- making that game he did uh Stephen spent his money doing all those things I'm just saying he's promising two hundred fifty you know him on a first name basis no I said that's what he's <laughs> promising and he spent his own money we spent our money on Star Citizen. I know, I know. I'm I'm just kidding we around a little bit. But we, we we're waiting for but, for this game while while all these other games that I brought up is is raising the bar slightly to where Star yeah. Citizen will have nothing to show for okay. eight years in development. Okay, okay. Hold on one second. I think what you're trying to say is you're making the assumption, and I think it's a super fair assumption that Star Citizen is going to be quite a few years before it hits any like major like milestone I'm, I'm of being saying, complete by, and, by and the, no, other no, games are going to catch up by, by the that time, point. Yes, exactly. By, by that yeah. time, all the games are going to catch up all the, it, it's, it's going to go from this, 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 this game that looked amazing. Like, Oh my God, the, you know, nobody could have pictured this back in 2012 when it was, it was announced, but now in 2021, 2022, 2023, that's just every game. Now, nowadays, yeah. I don't even think that if star citizen comes out, tomorrow and it was a just a linear game meaning that you just go straight through it you can't wander around and stuff like that it's not even gonna it's not gonna gonna be worth the wait because linear games doesn't really work anymore linear you know like you you just go straight who said it was linear i that's what that's that's what they've been it's a story it's just gonna be a linear story oh you 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 mean squadron 42 yes oh you said star citizen that's why i was confused yes sorry Sorry, Squadron Forty Two. If it just comes out and you can't like at least roam around, go to planets, maybe mine, maybe do some progression in some way, I think it's gonna fail. He's gonna have shiny actors, shiny, uh, uh, shiny uh, graphics, and it, it's gonna. If if Star Citizen waiting this long, and I mean uh, Squadron Forty Two waiting this long, and it comes out to be a game less than an eight out of ten. <laughs> no, it's it's not gonna be acceptable, you know what I'm saying? Of course, yeah. And it has the to longer be good. the Yeah, and, and and here's another bar that's gonna be raised soon. Um uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2, the one um that uh, a game that's that's promising a planet just as big as like the planets in Star Citizen, it's good it might not have like a gigantic star uh solar system, but it's gonna show a planet on the size s- scale of Star Citizen, but it's gonna be um is going to be populated with stuff to do. And that's another bar raised right there. I think this whole game, like when I, when I think what's the root of all star citizens problems, I think of the guy, I forgot what his name, John, something, Sean, something that sold him, sold Chris Roberts, the, uh, the ability to make star citizen in cry engine. You he picked the wrong engine from the start. It doesn't matter what it is right now. It doesn't matter that it's Lumberyard right now. It's just that our, our game could have progressed way, way far right now, farther than it is right now. I just think that this guy that was, you know, did you play sell, New World? I've watched it. I've watched it a lot. I've watched it. But it I, I don't think uh, New World really has an identity. It doesn't have an identity. Okay, like but Ashes but, of Creative. Okay, but creation. hold on. It's in the same engine. Yeah, I know it's in the same engine, but it's it, it just. Uh, a game that's you know meh you know to me you but know that's the gameplay is... dude we're talking about like yeah. the possibility of the engine and how it looks and how things work and how yeah uh, but it, it, uh, much even, progression it, 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 there you is want to talk it. about and how many people are there in to it. star citizen even with their them being like 30 40 50 people in the uh same area like i was watching on asmund gold stream yesterday they were la- lagging the hell you know with just 50 people in the same area you know okay um and and it, it just shows it, it i think the root of all these problem comes from that guy that sold uh chris roberts this he was just a salesman he don't care he don't care what you do after after you buy he just wants you to drive off the lot with the car 
he, he you know he doesn't he just wants his his commission so he sold him on the on the engine and now we got a game eight years later we don't even have the single player version and all these different games again black myth wukon dual universe ashes creation new world and uh beyond good and evil 2 raising the bar slightly 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 and by the time star citizen i mean squadron 42 comes out we won't have anything to show. We won't have anything like, oh my god, this is groundbreaking. It's it's nothing that's ever been done before. Y you know, it, it, it's just going to be like that. It's just going to be like a mess story with all these expensive actors in it. And, and, and linear, especially if it's linear. Oh god, man. Help, god help me if it's linear. That's not acceptable really anymore in, in video games. A linear, you know story if you had have a linear story you might as well be call of duty where you have like a main online line your your main thing is the online and selling loot boxes and you know and stuff like that it's it's just something else it, 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 i don't that, that's even, what even I think. in old wing commander games there were like little side mission things you could do so yeah i, think I, I hope be okay. I, I hope it is but i'm just saying like again my, my summary is just that squadron 42 it can't be linear and it like the it has to come out to or with something that that raises the bar because right now the bar is getting raced across the board when, when it comes to graphics is black myth wukon when when it comes to that planetary stuff you got you got beyond beyond good and evil 2 when when, when you when, when you're talking about like everything together like persistence you, you dual universe i could see that happening like persistence you could edit the land and stuff like that and it has full persistence and a little bit of everything in, in ashes of creation and i'm just astounded of the, what that guy did in three four years you know mm. um and with his own damn money too not my money not my 13 dollars all right well let's start wrapping it up is there yeah yeah so you don't think Star Citizen or Squadron 42 are going to live up to the hype anymore because everybody's I, catching I, up. It, 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 yes, everybody is catching up. Everybody. Okay. Like like just this year and seeing all these things, everybody's catching up to Star Citizen. And like I, I'm legitimately afraid that like... <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, like he, he it's gonna be, sh it's gonna be shown for what it is. Like back in 2013, 2012, this would have all been amazing. You know what I'm saying? But started from from being sold the wrong engine, and then start. Next problem is taking too long to come out. Now all these bars are raised, and now you have a mediocre game. You, you know and how to fix that, right? How? Buy more spaceships. Oh God, I, I'm done. I'm done buying more spaceships. I'm seventy dollars away from a thousand dollars. I'll give them the seventy dollars just to say I'm concierge. And oh yeah, here I, I just got. I guess big. Chris I is still a good salesman then, unmatched. <laughs> yeah, you're, oh, here, you're giving one, him seventy dollars for a top hat and monocle. <laughs> listen, listen, seventy dollars is nothing to me. I make that in in like two hours or so. Um, uh, it, it, uh, okay, a, a guy just messaged me over um over uh over discord he here's another game that's raising the bar directly competing with star citizen odyssey from um elite dangerous they're about to have space legs you can't even walk around your ship dude they're about to they're about to they're about to be able to to walk around in in that in that game i don't play it i played it for like five seconds and thing but the, again it's <laughs> it's gonna have space legs you're gonna have you're gonna have this little spaceman dude and it, it's it's again to prove my point the bar is being raised and i i right can't now, disagree with that is that the bar the bar star, star citizen set the bar the bar is not being raised but people are starting to catch up to that bar you cannot argue against that that I absolutely agree with you with. Um, yeah. But will Star Citizen continue to raise the bar? Maybe. Um, but no, at, no, 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 until the no. But at they the do uh, feature creep. At nope. the, yeah, exactly. But at the expense of the development taking even longer and longer and never finishing. Yeah, and this yeah. year has been total trash. I think every Star Citizen, uh, every Star Citizen backer is just totally beaten down this year. This has been the worst year, and I've been following this game for five years. I went to. How to, did they make a uh, billion dollars this year then, and are like literally I, I they're, no they're idea, the man. Apple of video I have games? No idea. I do not know. But but all that money coming in has just made them lazy and made us more angry. You're making a lot of statements that you you seem to think that you know exactly what's going on, but I I feel like you're, I, you're, hey, you're, I, you're I, actually I pay clueless. Attention to this game. I'm 
I'm just saying, maybe I sound like that, but I'm my my main reason was to come on here and say that that the bar is being raised and they're not kept keeping up with the bar unless they do feature creep. And then you said a bunch of other things <laughs> that make well, no sense, but yeah. Like the right. like, you're making a lot of not things that make no sense, but you're making a lot of uh, blanket statements about them, and I don't think that they're necessarily uh, fair or true, or you don't you couldn't possibly know if they were true, right? Like like, that, what, what did like I them, I'm not them making money so is making them lazy. Well, dude, like, the, why is everybody so angry? Where's all? Where's Chris Roberts and Sandy and stuff like that? Did they buy that house that they? Bar all right dude just, like, just fucking their... stop with that dumb <laughs> shit all right <laughs> seriously that's the type of stuff that i can't i can't listen to because you just read some dumb forum about something that makes no sense and that all these things of people that say they think they know about what's going on when they're also clueless so like that's right, where i gotta right. no, not, like you gotta chill because that's just but trolling. you do at least but you do at least agree with me that the bar is being raised and it's kind of scary. They're you know catching up to the we... bar. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I absolutely yeah. agree with that. But all right, I'm matched. I'll let you go. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your call, man. Talk to you later. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Dr. Introvertisius. What's up, doctor? Oh, uh, hey. What's up? Uh, no. What? Uh, check, check. I hear you. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. I hear you. Uh, yeah, I can hear. I can hear. So, uh, uh, what's up? Uh, not much. Uh, I'm good. I actually had an interesting time in the rock. Oh, yeah? Um, I got out of the rock to head into the ship and I took off the helmet and like I couldn't put it on, like, on again yeah that's because so the game is, just, is really rough the servers just yeah. take forever and that was just like yeah I don't know like sitting you've been playing anymore. the game a lot lately right uh, yeah so well not as much but have you been enjoying it? Uh, kind of. It's the rock. It's just that's like the thing that I do more now because it's actually fun. Yeah, it really is. It really is fun. Mm. What makes it fun for you? It's just uh, it's more there. It's not as like <sighs> frustrating. Yeah. You know, it's just simple. It's just yeah. Yeah. It's easy to use. Um, yeah, it's definitely easier to use than the other mining ships. Did you do mining with any other ships before, or just the rock? It was only the rock that I did. Okay, okay. But yeah, it's a good, like, uh, entry-level thing. You should try the other ships now that you've used the rock. Rent, uh, rent yourself a prospector. Do you have a lot of money in the game, or no? Uh, I'm about... 800,000, I think. Okay, so you need 2 million for the prospector. But you should try and do that and then give the prospector a try and compare them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Was there anything specific that you wanted to, like, ask or talk about today? Um... I don't know if... I think one of them is about, like... development, like, overall... Like, okay. how do you think it's been? I mean, I think recently. it's... Recently, I think it's been pretty good. I think that they're focusing on the right things. Like, uh, getting... Just trying to focus on getting the tech out and not really um, giving much mind to uh, making sure that they have patches that have big features in them. Like as as annoying as it is for a content creator, right? Like the last three pat the three nine, three ten, three eleven, and three twelve have all been somewhat um, disappointing in terms of what would be in them and and what kind of content you can make and how far the game seems to be progressing in terms of playability. 
but at the same time the focus like the one of the most telling and important things that i think we heard this week was when clive owen came on to calling all devs and said uh that any team that had an engineer in it stopped what they were doing and focused their work on server meshing every single engineer in the company and for me i think that that is uh the most positive thing as difficult as this year will be and has heard about uh, and ha and has been i think that that's like a really good thing because i think they have their hearts in the right place and it's to make the damn game right yeah that's so, the thing that and that's that's what i like now. yeah it's screw the development updates it's screw the patches always having something special in it uh let's let's take the baby steps that we need to take and then get get to where we need to go i cache uh server meshing persistence orgs all all the it's pillars all it seems that, that they're finally shifting their focus towards yeah, the pillars it's all that thing that make this thing actually work yeah and maybe it was planet tech v4 that needed to happen first and and now that they're mm -hmm. finally have their hearts in the right place it seems like so for me personally i think it's been like a really positive week or month or year i should say but uh a very difficult one at the same time that's an interesting um insight into it yeah I mean, for me it's been um okay uh i mean i always started in this at the start of the year so i haven't seen like more much of like any like anything else yeah so f <laughs> i mean it's like yeah, it's all right. It's like exciting, like exciting, but it's you know it's interesting to see. Yeah. But I do think like there has to be more, like happening, like otherwise it just won't. Like it's just staying like as it, it is now. But does it? it was, eh. Like does does there really need to be more? Like we we watched the internet historian video about No Man's Sky recently, and we started talking a lot about that like their resurgence, right? Nobody played No Man's Sky, nobody cared about No Man's Sky, and everyone's sort of pretty pleased with it at this point. And it's obviously like a more linear game where you just like play it for a little while and then you put it yeah. down. It's not this game that you pick up and play all the time. But in general, what they did was they just, they put their hearts in the right place. They 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 put their noses down and, and they worked on the game. And they didn't focus so much on the, the present. They focused on finishing what they started yeah that um that makes sense now because i've heard it's all someone else say it that makes sense but um the stuff about the um l of interrupt it mm -hmm. that's just again like a second time and i just like, I don't, like, understand why it's happening again. Because it's, it's not been... a priority. It's the fucking elevator. Who cares? That's why mm. it keeps getting pushed back, because there's more important things. That's literally what was said there. I actually have it up still, so I can read it. Um, the work took a little bit extra time for the, the early UI, what they, I guess, what they wanted it to look like. And then um, with that work complete, the task gets passed off to level design, but with such a tight turnaround, our level design does not have enough bandwidth to get the work in before 3.11's branch day. The majority of our level designers are focused on other 3.11 tasks. So they decided that whatever tasks they were working on were more important than the elevator. That's why. Like, it is ridiculous to see something constantly get pushed down, 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 down. It's because it's not that important. But when it's something like salvage, it hurts a lot more, right? Because it elevator panel update is getting the same treatment salvage did. The problem is the salvage was something that we really wanted. The elevator thing we just look at and go, what the hell is so hard with the elevator panel? So we just don't get it. And we're like, are these guys just incompetent? I don't think so. I think it's just straight up what they said is we were designing it and making it look good for too long. And then there's more important things to do now. So it's getting pushed again. That's it. So don't read too much into into everything, right? Read it. 
listen to it. Read it three, four times if it takes... Look, I didn't get what missile operator mode moving off was. I thought that they were focusing on something more in the short term. So I needed to read it the for the 20th time, because 19 times wasn't enough. But yeah, just yeah, that's read it and I make sure do. you're listening, because they I do think they do a pretty good job of 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 explaining to us what's going on. It's just we really read what we want to hear and we listen to what we want to hear and not actually what's going on in a lot of cases, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly that. That's what I've just had. And, yeah. yeah. All right, well, um, anything else real quick, Doctor, before we go to the next? No, no. Really. Okay. Well, thank you for your call, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, our next caller is the Q. Hello, the Q. You there? Yeah, uh, what's going on, brother? What's up, dude? So, what do you want to talk about today? It's, it's anything day. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I've been here. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, I'd first like to say uh, I appreciated Henrik's call there. He had some uh, some what I would believe is pretty correct insight on uh, decision making inside of a larger company, <clears throat> specifically a development company. Sure, he's where... going to school to be a game developer, so he he kind of knows well, what's I mean... going on when it comes to this stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, I just know that in a major company, when you go to staff meetings and you have the VP of engineering in there, you have the VP of marketing in there, you have the mm -hmm. VP of business development, et cetera, uh, they get pretty heated, actually, when it comes okay. to prioritization, um, sure. when it comes to what direction you should take your product. Um, that's very common. Um, we have that all the time in my company. Okay. Uh, so that I don't think it is just an issue of Chris Roberts not making a decision or, or he's the only one with the vision. I mm -hmm. think there are a lot of visions and those visions are competing with each other. And that, that's, that's normal. I don't think that's unusual okay. at all. Um, um, is it normal in year eight with like the game not really being where it needs to be? Could, th could this be why we're where we are? Do you think? Well, well, I, well, yeah, let me answer it in two parts there, if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. Um, first of all, I'm not in game development. We, we make, uh, my company makes satellite communications modems. Okay. So it, they're, they're pretty complex. Um, we have bandwidth management and stuff like that. So we do a lot of software, hardware, firmware. You know, we, we have over a thousand engineers. So um, what I would say is I have a product that we're doing right now that's taken uh, to date, you know, six and a half years, and we're already about 180 million into it. Mm. Um, now we have different uh, different issues than like a gaming company would have. You know, we have certification process because we settle the government and things like that. So, sure. um, but a lot of that time and money is actually in the R and D effort from you know spending to to develop new waveforms. Now mm. I don't know how complex it is to rewrite a gaming engine, but I would assume it's fairly complex. Sure. Um, just from you know so. I, I don't know how far they should or shouldn't be. There's no company in the world that is, um, I would say, you know, 100% efficient, right? Every company makes mistakes. Um, and I, I'm glad they did change their engine when they did. Uh, we have a saying that there's, it's never too late to unmarry a bad decision. I don't care how deep you are into the money. If it's a bad decision, it's a bad decision. So they swapped out and they did the right thing. Mm. Um, did they pick the, the right next engine? I don't know. That's, that's not for me to say. Um, but I do know it's never too late to abandon a bad, a bad choice. No matter yeah, how I mean, but they consistently money. say that it is the right choice. For but that's what they have to from, from the public perspective. Sure. That's yeah. what companies do. Yeah. I mean, you, you've worked for a company. I know that you have a, another job and that's what companies do. Yeah. Like right. we, we had a situation recently where it was, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, that you have to put a public face. Yeah. But the other thing I wanted to say about that is, um, though it may be accurate to say that uh, Star Citizen will be the most expensive game ever made, you know, um, that might be an accurate statement. Sure. But it's certainly not a comprehensive statement. Um, okay. I what think do you mean? The more comprehensive statement would be that Cloud Emporium Gaming is the world's largest crowdfunded company in the world. So sure. that, that money didn't go to just building a game. Yeah. That money went to building an entire company. Mm. Now, if you've ever started a company, um, you would know that they had, to, they had to pay for computers, monitors, printers, IT staff, 
uh, business development people, HR people, desks, chairs, buildings, rent, electricity, you know, any regulatory things they had to do. There's a lot of things they've paid for over the years. Sure. And even at the start of this year, they were somewhere around 300 million, right? Somewhere ish. Yeah. Um, they hit it. They hit 300 million in 2020. Right. They didn't end the year with zero dollars in their bank account. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would I would say at maximum they they spent 250 million over eight years, and that is not unreasonable to start a company of 600 that is now 600 people, mm. multinational, multi building, um, and having the growing pains of any real company would have you know, making those mistakes, having to abandon those things, wasted money. That just happens. That happens in, in businesses that are mature, let alone brand new businesses. Sure. Nobody's so perfect. I, I don't, I, so to your question of, do I think they are far enough along after eight years? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that I was considering was we know the, I think it's the Colders. Is that, is that the family that just re re-upped their, uh, their uh, investment, investment. Yep. Mm -hmm. they they put a what another 15 or 17 right? 17 I, it's my favorite number 17. so i remember it yeah okay so they put in another 17 million i can't believe someone because unlike us we're backers they are an investor which means they expect a return on said investment yep and the only way they're going to get a return on said investment is from squadron 42 quite frankly they're not going to get that on star citizen they're going to get that on squadron 42 they're hoping not in the near term way. obviously yeah yeah, but they're hoping that's going to be a triple A game, like all recent triple A games that came out. Sure. You know, make anywhere between three quarters and a billion dollars. You know, that's, that's what the typical triple A game is, is making right now. And that's what I think they're expecting. And I don't think they would have re upped and, and tripled their investment without seeing some progress there that we are not privy to as, as backers. Right. I, I'm hoping I, I could okay. be absolutely wrong. You seem pretty business savvy. So let me ask you this about I'm, that, about yeah, that barely. specific statement. Is the a good amount of people already own Squadron Forty Two? Yeah. So, in order to hit three quarters of a billion, uh, to a billion dollars, about seventeen million copies sold somewhere around there. Yeah, that is going to have to. This is you're going to need a PC only, that can play it. Have, but it's going to have to hit consoles somehow to do that. That that's a possibility. That is a possibility. I don't know if that's the case, but I nah. do know we've only we only have 2.5 million accounts, and we don't know how many of those have Squadron 42. Um, let's assume half of them, right? So we're a, a, a small fraction of the way. Somebody you know, in chat's calling you a best. CIG lobbyist right now. I, I, I'm not. Um, I, I'm not. I, I work. I'm, I'm an executive at a different company. I'm, I'm yeah. not, not only work in the gaming industry. We know. I'm just. I'm just laughing at him because he's he's being an idiot. I think. Um, but yeah, but they very well could. I mean, a lot of people keep saying it's going to be a flop if it doesn't have this or that. That's not how most games are sold nowadays. Most games make 80% of their money within the first weekend. Mm -hmm. So, so the reviews be damned. They're going to make, they're going to make 75 to 80% of that money in that first week because yeah. people are just going to want it. They want to want to experience it themselves. Then they may give it bad reviews and they may or may not get that additional 25%, but they're going to make a vast majority that first week. Especially if they time the release properly at a holiday time frame or some some type of time frame in which people are going to mass buy. Yeah, and we'll I, see. I can't believe they don't have business savvy people there. I yeah. mean, they, they pulled in enough money. They they got to have business savvy people. For for me, so. they they don't even have to make that much. <clears throat> like I I think we we would think three hundred millions to get to this point, and we would need a little bit more because like for me, I'm always looking at you know what's going to get Star Citizen done. And a, a solid Squadron 42 release seems really important for that. And, you know, just selling, uh, you know, adding another 100 million or something to the to the uh, funding seems like enough for me. So if they hit if they exceed that, I think it would be a massive excess, uh, success just for for me, because uh, I I look at it this way is um, this this is really, uh, in my opinion, somewhat un unethical as what they're doing. And it's the idea that Star Citizen's this forward-facing thing and they don't mention Squadron 42 very much. So when you're like, for example, one of the most prominent Star Citizen streamers right now, Captain Burks, had no idea that Squadron 42 even existed until he had been streaming the game for three months. 
because and that's like the and the biggest problem with that is is that a, a large percentage of the money that you spent on the game was going to develop squadron 42 and it i don't think they do the best job of uh of explaining I, that part <clears throat> and that's well, that's sort of problematic a, a very interesting marketing uh a way of marketing that I've never sure. seen before. Yeah. And that unlike um, unlike most companies, you, you create a distinct marketing plan. Um, you put money towards it. You advertise. You, you do whatever you need to do to give your vision to the public to buy into your vision. Um, what I've seen CIG do over the last, uh, I don't know, I've only been a backer since late 15. But okay. what I've seen CIG do since then is they – put out little bits of information and allow the community to theory craft what they believe that will become and yep. use their imagination of what can happen. Yeah. So then that, so then that community then talks to their buddies and, yep. and, ta and tells them about these, these great things that are going to happen when at no point in time during this chain did CIG ever uh, confirm that, yes, you're going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. That was just all made up by either content providers or people on forums or whatever. That was completely, but they let them run with it because it's brilliant. Yeah. They don't ever have to confirm anything. The the um, problem was, see, that's the one of the bigger problems with you starting in 2015. They confirmed a shit ton between 2012 and the end of 2016. They've learned their lesson since then and don't do that and allow the the theory crafting thing to continue to flow that happened as well back then but right. there was saw, a I lot the, of confirmations uh, you know uh the marks i can't remember what they called on kickstarter you know the the goals that they funding goals school. but there was yeah, way yeah, worse I, I, there was way worse than that yeah, do some your, of those were pretty if you crazy. you seem like a busy <laughs> dude but if you ever have an hour just take an hour and go to the uh 10 for the chairman playlist on the star citizen YouTube channel. And it's literally, it it's literally this Chris Roberts. Will we be able to do this? Why? Yes, backer. You will. Oh, Chris, <laughs> what about this? Will you be able to do this? Oh, why? Yes, backer. You will. And it was just over and over and over again for years. That is again, another unfortunate side of people who, um, who is a venture capitalist money for yeah, example. He's a visionary. Well, when you're going for venture capitalist money, right? Uh, and I, I guess you can say the same thing with you know what what they did. You know, they crowdfunded it. It's kind of mm -hmm. the same thing. You're you're trying to get an audience to buy into your vision. You uh, <laughs> here's the theory, right? You you tell them that you can make it in ten years, right? Knowing yeah. it'll take fifteen because if you get them to ten, they're going to buy in for another. They got to stay for the five. Yep, and that's where right. we are. I mean, that, that's, that's where we are in twenty twenty. Yep, that that's, is exactly do where anything, we are, though. He didn't do anything that is out of the ordinary. So if people are thinking he just scanned, that's not what happened. That is the standard modus operandi of every person going for venture capitalist money. That's God that's what damn. anyone will tell you. The professionals, when you're like, I need, you know, there are actually firms that help you achieve that and get venture. And this is what they tell you. Um, so that is that is hilarious that that people think this is the only he's the only one that's done that. And, uh, I don't think they I think like it's. Say, I don't think they think he's the only one that did that. But it's it's the time that that we got got. I got got. It, it is. Well, everyone does. Yeah. But I still think the product's going to come out. I, I, I mean, I, again, it, it's only bad if they sell it and they know they're never going to achieve it. I don't think he yeah. believes he's never going to achieve it. I don't think that's the belief. I, I, I agree with anyone that. Anyone at CIG yeah, I agree with you. believes they're not going to make a game. I, yep. I think they all believe that. Absolutely. And and. In that case, I will continue to fund this game. And me, me and my wife have put a lot into this game, and we will continue to. Yeah. Um, I'm not we really, do believe in it. I'm not really comfortable putting more into it, because I, I, for me personally, I need to see more at this point. I've been here since since 2013, and and I'm, uh, I'm just seeing kind of the repeat of the same old stringing me along, moving the goalposts kind of thing. And, I, and when the goalposts stay a little bit more static, and I start seeing progression towards that goalpost, that's when then when I'll feel comfortable um, giving more funding, but there's nothing wrong with with uh, you feeling the way that you do. Yeah, I mean, I do think it'll come out. I think it's gonna be a brilliant game when it does. I, I do have, I had a lot of reservations at the beginning, and I still have these same reservations. Is you they've given an artist the controls over the ship, and if you work it's, in a company that has engineers, which are artists in, in their own way, 
and you give them unlimited reign, they will take forever. Um, you, you can't give an artist unlimited reign. And Chris Roberts is a great artist. He has a vision. Um, unfortunately, visions expand um, yeah. and feature creep happens. Yep. Uh, so that is a, a problem they have to contend with. I don't know how that will continue in the, in, in the future, but I hope they sure. rein it in a little bit. Yeah. But I still believe in the vision. I still think a game's, I mean, we have a playable, quote unquote, playable game now, right? I, I would, I tell everyone that, that asks, you know, that comes and says, hey, should I buy this game? I, I try to tell them, I, I would at least watch some, some yeah. people play for a while on Twitch. But at the end of the day, do I think it's worth $45 buy-in? Yeah, you'll get a hundred hours worth of it out of it before you get completely bored. And you, you can't ask more than that out of any AAA title game you pay $40 for. Um, you know, that's, in my opinion, though, I mean, yeah, I never I, tell I think... people to spend more than that, though. Right, right. Well, me either. Um, yeah. I don't want to be the, the the reason someone drops drops their bank on a on a vision, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah. But all anyways, right. I don't want to take all your time, buddy. No, I think that was a great way to end the show. So thanks. I appreciate it, man. That was uh, some interesting insights into things that I I've never been really a part of in my life, and it's just like the business world. So it well, uh it I'm opened me on. opened our eyes a little bit. I think. All right, buddy. All right, man. I'll Have talk a great to one. You next time. Talk to you yep. soon. Bye now. All right. I think that'll do it for today's show. So I think this was an interesting experiment. Uh, yeah, there's somebody else in the green room, but his mic's muted, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but I, I actually am, need to go anyway, so I, there was no way for me to communicate who can, uh, if I can leave or, or, or when the show was going to end. Um, but yeah. So I think this was an interesting experiment. Maybe we could do this again in the future. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, you know, there's a feedback section on the Discord. Let me know what you guys thought about today's show. Uh, same thing. If you guys are watching on YouTube, leave a comment or head over to the Discord and leave some feedback there and let me know what you guys think. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit easier to do this way. And uh, I think it's something to do occasionally when... Uh, for me, I've been dealing with a lot of internet issues and, and I've been playing a lot of New World, so I didn't have as much focus on, on the show, so I didn't line up a guest or anything today. But the plan is for the next couple of weeks to line up some guests. Uh, I, there's definitely uh, a whole, a, a, at least three that I have in mind that I'd like to line up. So uh, at the very least, we should have guests on the next three weeks. So guys, uh, thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, all that stuff down below, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, talk to you soon.